Okay, so this is a cool room. We're actually in the fueling machine room. Up above me was the main floor, the uh, reactor hall I talked to, and right below me is the reactor itself. Over to my left and to my right are the east and west fueling machines. The fueling machines are still here. Back in the days of operation, these fueling machines actually used to retract down from a trolley system. They would go into the reactor vault, index on, and they would do online refueling. So what's really neat was they would do this online refueling without the use of any sort of computer. So to finish up down below, why don't we head into the boiler room, we can have a look at the boiler package itself and everything associated with the primary heat transport system is still in place. So here we are in the upper boiler room. Now if you think about a nuclear reactor and if you think about how we're producing power, we're producing power by creating steam. There's many ways to make steam, whether it was coal fired, oil fired, natural gas. A nuclear reactor is no different. You're using the nuclear reactor as your heat source. So one of the things they did here was they created hot heavy water with the nuclear reactor. That fed into what we refer to as the primary heat transport system. The primary heat transport system was collected from the reactor and pumped through these three large pumps into the boiler system. The heavy water would come into the boiler system at about 300 degrees Celsius, somewhere around 1400 PSI, and they would create steam in what they referred to as a light water secondary cooling system. This is the boiler package itself. So just below me is the boiler. That's where the heavy water, the hot heavy water came in. They produced steam in the boiler and captured that steam in the tank above me, which was referred to as the steam drum. From there, that steam makes its way through the wall back into the turbine hall where we were earlier. And that would turn the steam turbine in order to create your electricity. After the steam went through the turbine, it was condensed and that condensate was returned back into this loop where it would be returned back into steam again as part of an ongoing cycle. So there was, there was sort of two levels to the boiler room. There was an upper boiler room and a lower boiler room. We were in the upper boiler room a little earlier where we showed you the primary heat transport pumps and the boiler itself. Down below, we are now at the actual floor level of the reactor. And behind me, is the feeder tubes and the feeder tubes were basically collection tubes that would bring the hot heavy water from the reactor through collected in headers and piped up to the primary heat transport system so we're about 50 feet below grade right now which is at about the level of the ottawa river below me is about another 30 feet and down there was the dump tank which was part of the collection system for the reactor moderator and also some sumps for collecting water in the facility itself. So we've made our way down to the bottom of the facility. You can't go any deeper than this. We're about 85 feet below grade right now in the dump tank room. Over to my right is the dump tank which held the heavy water moderator. And over to my left is the wells area sump which is the primary collection point for any water that's in the facility. So before we head up to the control room, I have a video I'd like to share. Uh, this is a video that we took a couple years back with the help from the mechanical equipment development guys down on site. This is where we actually cored through nine feet of concrete to get from the fueling machine room down into the reactor vault. So this is the first time we've seen in the reactor vault in over 28 years. You can see the reactor face and as the camera pans around, you can see the condition of the vault leading over to the back side of one of the rotating end shields. So I thought it'd be fitting to end our tour here. We've made our way back up from down below. And we're now in the control room of NPD. The control room now itself is empty, but as you can see on the pictures to my right, that's what it was like when it was operating. You have your operators at the control console, all the instrumentation is in the background. We even have the original pin board still here. 
And these were used when they were operating. They still show you different positions of valving, for example. So I spent my whole career in the nuclear industry. I've had unique opportunities to not only commission new reactors, but work in operating reactors. And now, in my role at NPD, I've got the chance to decommission a reactor. And I really think it's important to preserve the history, doing unique things like this, yet complete the life cycle of the reactor by decommissioning it fully. And I truly believe in situ decommissioning is the correct approach to closing that life cycle. Inside, the small staff goes about its job as though producing nuclear power were a matter of routine. And after all, why not? This was the purpose of NPD, to extract energy from uranium and make it available as electrical power at the simple turn of a switch.